What's going on boys, not guys here, welcome back to the Meta Weekly Tennis Update for those pushing towards rank 1 or to the league division. Now let's just get straight into it, not that much wasting time. There's something I want to mention to you in regards to the 3-4-2-1. We got, I, I'm going to make some major changes here which is very important and make sure you do follow these along. When I released this tactic, I understand that it was very aggressive and that's why I said in the video, make sure you put this on balanced if you find it to be too effective. This is why I say don't skip the videos, just copy the tactics. Because if it doesn't work for you, then everyone comes crying to me after. The key thing is adapting it for your playstyle. Now, I would recommend put this on balance, okay? If this is so aggressive, because the reason why, as I said to you, the defensive line, because these guys are not CDMs in a 3-5-2, they're so far up. You need to be able to dribble with these guys at the back to push the ball and bring the ball forward to the midfield line. A lot of players, they can't do that. So this is what I've done. Balance, now depth. Now we reduce depth. Now don't forget, I'm not reducing the depth because this is not attacking depth. This is not when you have the ball at your feet. This is in the, in the defensive phase. But I'm just dropping it back a little bit so you drop a bit deeper and these players can just come back a little bit more. The two centre mids and kind of outlet stadiums. That's it, okay? Get that. 25 width. Don't forget we are still defending in that 4-4-2, okay? Build up play. Go slow build up play. If you are struggling with players moving too quickly and you haven't got that ability, you can put slow build up play on for both of these players. Um, for the final third, leave that on forward runs. You can also use direct passing. As I mentioned in the video, I prefer forward runs and that is why I use it. And everything else is the same. Now, if you're really struggling, yeah, try to get players here that are medium high work rates. It's important, guys. If you're really struggling, medium high or low high, like a, I'm trying to think of a Makaleli, for example, someone that would just sit back a bit more deeper. I have Vieira. If you're playing two box to boxes here, you're going to struggle. Also, try to have one player that's more agile. In fact, because what happened, if you remember from my team, um, I actually did Rabio SPC, and I was testing this with Rabio, right? And Rabio alongside Vatina, I would Vieira. They were both too clunky, but at least with Vatina, he's a bit more agile on the ball and allows me to have that movement. So that's just what I wanted to say in regards to the 4-3-2-1. And again, if you don't like it, just don't use it. You don't have to use it, guys. Just use it if you find it's good. Use it a couple of games. If you don't like it, then don't use it. And then that's when I say the 3-5-2. No, 3-5-2, it's so balanced. Now, people are going to say to me, look, okay, I understand why you defend this in a 4-4-2. What about the 3 5 2? Why are you just defending the back five? You know what? Fair play, you got a point. If you really want to defend in the back five, you can just put everyone on comeback and offense. Just the, the usual system. Um, but the way you defend in a 5 3 1 1, so you have these guys that come back and you have one that the midfielders come back. So in this case, we have Griezmann. I'll show you how you do it. So you have to put the cam on stay forward. Okay, otherwise, it'll mess up the system. That's going to be your center forward when you're defending, and River is going to be your striker. Okay, this Pedro card, by the way, one of the best cards I've used for lesser dribbling in the game. I'm telling you that now. Second striker, stay forward. The other player, put him on comeback in the fence. That's how you make a back three. Biggest players on the left-hand side, this player will make the left center mid. Vieira will go in the middle. And Evertino will get pushed to the right center mid. That's how it would work. Both CDMs, cut passing lanes, come and send. Don't forget the deep line playmaker. I really only do it when there's two CDMs. I think it works better with two, not just one. Left mid, right mid, as usual, come back on the fence and uh, get it behind. Look, you can still use conservative. It's just that because nowadays everyone's got stamina. We're not playing FIFA in the first two, three weeks when it was a bit different. That is when you needed to put come back on the fence on these players. That way you just don't really lose that stamina, but you don't need it anymore. I've left them on balanced and then I left the back like that. And these are tactics, exact same. So even if um, you're not, def so even if you're defending in a 4-4-2, don't worry, um, you're defending the 5-3-1-1, this is completely fine. Again, if you are still struggling, remember I said, when you use a formation, it will work 99% of the time. But again, if you're not good at certain things, like let's say you're not good at dribbling, or you're not good at defending, try to tune it. So if you just don't be scared to reduce the formation down, just because I give you that template, is different. If, I, if you give a pro, remember, if you give a pro player... 78 or 80 depth i'm pretty sure they can play at a very high level and still retain their rank one no problem but you give this to someone who's typically a division three division two player it's game over so i understand adapt things for your play style what i've got is a good template here but you just need to adapt the small things here and there for your particular play style and you can drop it to 30 if you really really want to but i don't like sitting that deep and um, the lowest i'll probably go is 35 and uh, we kept long ball on this forward one so this one would defend in a 5-3-1-1 
There we go back, Griezmann entered midfield. If you want, you keep Griezmann on stay forward. So then now what would happen is now you have one formation which is kind of ultra defensive with a five defensive with a five uh, with a five three one. But also when you're attacking, it's then a three five two. So you kind of have a, a mix of both worlds here. You have a very defensive off the ball, out of possession, and in possession, you have a very offensive three five two. So it works out perfectly there. So then this would be now your main pressing formation. And again, I, I would say just use team press now. So what I will do is I would use a 3-5-2 first. And then I will then use a 3-4-2-1. So I will start with this one, let's say, if I'm struggling or let's say I'm 1 or 2 nil down and I can't press the ball, then I will go to this formation. Okay. If you do want to get better at FIFA 23, I do have a FIFA score series, but just before you skip ahead, what if I told you if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money? I can say that because I've been running my paid advance in that FIFA score series successfully for many years and thousands of others have joined already and still stay on. This is for all levels of those that want to improve on FIFA and you won't find these videos on my YouTube channel. These videos are in a progressive systematic learning system that teaching you everything from the core mechanics of FIFA to the meta so you can get better at FIFA as a whole, not just this game with examples and explanations that go beyond the scope of YouTube videos. With new videos coming out every single week, these videos also adjust to recent updates and patches so you can stay up to date. So come join thousands of others in a mature audience community for those looking to get better. Patreon.com forward slash nil guides, link is down below in the description. Now when you join, we already have a library of hundreds of videos that are specifically made for both new gen and old gen. With new videos and FIFA 23 getting added every single week. We also have an additional group coaching as well that we started this year due to high demand and high request. And don't forget guys, it's a money back guarantee. So if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. That is the nil guides guarantee. Anyway, link is down below in the description, patreon.com forward slash nil guides. But anyway, back to the video. We'll come back to the 423 one in a second. So that is basically how it is. So you could start, for example, on this one. If your opponent is holding the ball, wasting time, or you want to apply a bit more pressure, you can use this one and you can just use the D-pad tactic team press to make it more pressing. That's it. Solution for everyone. It should work for everyone now. As simple as that. And then the 424, this one is just this. Guys, okay, so you don't want to start with this one. People keep, people keep starting this with minute one. This is not the one to start with. Okay. If it's one hour left of foot champs, you've got to blitz through your games. Okay. Let's see. You want to do it that way? That's fine. But this is a formation to use if you're like, let's say your opponent has the ball and they're holding it and lobbing it from left back to right back and you can't press the ball. This is throwing the kitchen sink, pressing at a very extreme level. That is why we put constant pressure on. High width, high depth, wide as possible. In a 4-4-2, fast build up play, we get the ball quickly, forward runs. And even the center mids are on get forward, cover center, get into the box for a cross, okay? So literally, you're going to be defending with a back line of five, but everyone else is going to go inside the box. Six players, you're overriding almost most defenses, I would say. Um, don't forget, we've still got the comeback in defense. Nothing's changed there, comeback. Everyone's on comeback, get in behind. We've got the strikers on, stay central. And basically, that is it. Center mids, both on cover center, um, get forward and uh, get him box across and left back, right back, step back, cover center. Now, as I said with this one, people keep asking me this as well. Um, a lot of questions I had, why not bring the left back and right back forward? Well, if you want to, you can. But when you get countered, you're done anyway because someone's just going to exploit the wing areas. And putting cover wing on these guys, you lose the integrity in the middle. So it's no point even pushing the left back and right back forward because all happens is the left back and right back they just double up with these players. They're just too close to each other. So... You know, if you use that, okay, that's fine down the wing, but most people don't want to break through in the middle. That's where you want the danger area. So it's better to leave your back four there. Then you have your, all your players attacking. Again, this is throwing a kitchen sink, guys. Okay, so let's say you start the game in a 3-5-2. Okay, let's say in theory, you start the game in a 3-5-2. If you're struggling, you can stay on this formation. If your opponent is playing a bit more defensive and you need the five striker attack, as I mentioned last week, then you change to the 3-4-2-1. If you need to, you can always use the D-pad tactic team press. But this way, if you use this formation, because a lot of you still love this formation, but this way you can still defend in a 4-4-2 and press naturally yourself and be very attacking. This is the gung-ho formation, 2-0 down, 17 minutes, no time to mess around, then use this formation. So what's this 4-2-3-1? This is the one that's basically to always start the game with. So the 3-5-2, you can go into a game and start with a 3-5-2. 
it's fine. But the 4 2 is just a bit more conservative. I, as I've always told you every year, it's the most meta formation in the game. It does everything perfectly. You attack in a 5. You attack in a 5 with one of your, with one of your center mids going forward if you want to. And also you defend in a bank of 5, which is very rare to find a formation. Because a 4-4-2, you got your two strikers up here. This one, you got your, your camp. So it's a bit deeper, easier for you to defend. Okay, so this is the way that I have to set up. I do have the extra strike option here. A lot of questions have been asked about the extra striker. Look, if you want to, you can put players as striker. But the problem is, you're better off just subbing a player like Perisic on. Because that means that if you use players as striker, for example, people like to use join the attack, for example, um, player striker doesn't make a difference in the last couple of minutes of the game. But it's because I was talking about striker. Uh, striker join the attack people got confused with that one um, but if you put join the attack the problem is if you start the game and you start with a 4-2-3-1 you're going to have your center back running forward the entire game you might not want that so what, the way that i do it basically the way that i do it is i have a player like perisic on the pitch right and then what i do basically when a game starts, this is how i set up 4-2-3-1 right no join the attack i literally start with a 4-2-3-1 and i play the game if I need to close the game out, let's say I'm winning 2-0, I would either use the 3-5-2 or the 4-2-3-1. Why do I use both? Sometimes you want to defend with a back five, sometimes you want to pack out the midfield. It depends on your play. If your opponents are burning, abusing Travellers, I'll be using the 4-2-3-1 a lot more because you pack out the midfield with five players. This one is more if you've got three centre mids. Still works very, very well, but you've got two, you've got three players there in the midfield. So I will start with this formation normally if I'm tryharding. Then if I can't get through with this, I will go to a 3-5-2. Most of the time, I would veer between these two formations because this is ultra attacking and ultra defensive. This is defensive and attacking as well. They're two very balanced. But this is balanced defense, balanced attack. This is very defensive and very attacking. This one is very balanced defending, but applying pressure and very attacking with a with a front five. So if I can't get through with a 3-5-2, I need the extra striker. Then I use the 3-4-2-1. Then if I'm losing, the gung-ho formation is the 44. That is how I set that formation up. And as I said, look, if I'm winning 2-0 and I'm on a 3-5-2 and I feel like, you know what, I need to have two CDMs. I need that pressure. I need the land ram to come back. Just put everyone on come back in the fence. So, but, for, but when I start the game, I want to stay central, get in behind and stay forward for both my strike and my camp. I want to defend like a 4-4-1-1. Lam Ram come back in the fence. Both CDMs cut past and step out cover center. Left back, right back, stay back, overlap. And that is the way that I play it. And that's why I say, look, I wish there was more slots. Trust me, if there was, if, if there was even just two more slots, it would have been perfect. But because there isn't, we have to improvise. You have to put slot things in here and then. That is why it's so hard to do it because I need an ultra defensive. Realistically, if I had like if I had like serious like I was paid for like a championship, I want an ultra defensive and ultra attacking. Then I'd want a balanced formation, like a 4-2-3-1. So this is the way that if, if I had a choice, I have a 4-3-3 here with two CDMs, and I'll have a 4-2-4 here, let's say in theory. Then I'll have a 4-2-3-1 here. Okay. And then I'll have, for example, like here, I'll have a 3-5-2. And then let's say, for example, like here. I'll have another maybe attacking one or maybe whatever, and I use a four-one-two-one-two. It's because then you got one narrow formation. You're gonna see my terrible handwriting. No wonder I didn't do well on any um, written exams. Thank God, computer science all typed up. Um, and then you have um, a wide. Well, I suppose you can say a wider formation. It's a wide formation. It's still defensive narrow. Then you got one that's a mixture of the two. Then you got the ultra attacking and you got the ultra defensive. That would be. In theory, a perfect situation for me. Because we don't have that many slots, a lot of improvisation. So that's why the 4 2 3 1 does two things. It's kind of like, okay, it's that very balanced formation. Um, um, this one over there, that very balanced formation. But then it's also, if I want to make it very defensive, I can literally just go in and just put all these players on comeback and defense. That's it. If I want to make it more attacking, I can use the extra striker option. Simple as that. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bit more of an explanation than usual on how exactly I'll set this up. Um, don't forget, if you want to get better people, come to my Patreon. So it's patreon.com forward slash nil, guys. Links down below in the description. Or you can click just over here. Um, well, click over here. Sorry. I've got my over here. 
And uh, don't forget, if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. That is a nil guys guarantee. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, of course. I'll catch you next time. Any other questions for next week? Let me know down below. Peace.